Hey, what's up everybody? Thanks for clicking on the video. This is David Pendleton and now I'm going to cover the rest of the pro division of the big top tournament. I left off after hole six yesterday because I knew hole number seven had great wind to try to get to the green. So I wanted to spend a little bit of time this morning trying to figure out that hole. Right now I'm sitting in first place. I don't anticipate that that's going to hold. There's a couple people that are minus 15 at the turn that have better tiebreakers than me. But I was also minus 15 at the turn, and in my opinion, I thought that the back nine played much more difficult than the front nine. All right, so this is going to be holes number 7 through 18. Let's get this party started. I'm going to show you two different drives on hole number 7. One is going to be with an extra mile, and the other one's going to be with an APOC. Now, what I'm trying to do here is I really want to land my ball on you know obviously above the water right onto that second part of fairway but that right that little right part where it curves in underneath the sand bunker and that's important because we want to bounce over towards the green but then we don't want these trees to get on our way of shot number two so this one took me way too long to get this hole figured out and it's still not really a hundred percent down but i've got two good drives here to show you again one with an extra mile one with an apoc here we're going to adjust our our wind we're going to turn around and we're going to pull this thing back to max and then as far as the op goes we're going to go with a full ball of curl outside the window and then max op and uh, we're definitely trying to hit perfect this is a bad bad great left but you know the nice part about the great left here was is i was still okay i mean i was surprised that i was okay now the backspin is going to vary depending on how high the wind is. So, you know, we might want to reduce the backspin a little bit, maybe the only half a bar or so. But here's going to be an APOC 6, of course. And then I've got two bars of side spin to the right here with one back. You see there's less wind, so I went with less backspin. Um, but the same thing, we're going to pull our rings, and then we're going to flip the camera around, and then we're going to push it back to max. Same thing with the overpower, full OP. You got the whole ball outside the adjustment zone. Now here I hit a perfect ball, but the thing about the perfect ball was I hit down, but then I clip this rough right here and I roll out, but it's still okay. I mean, it's still a short shot, you know, for your eagle opportunity. And then when it comes to the eagle, you know, I've got the M bringer here. I try to go max top, but now you're going to see here that I don't like this glitchy ball guideline at all. So I'm going to put my ball guy I'm going to put my target back on the fringe and then I'm going to find just a consistent landing spot and then pull my rings here. See there I'm aiming dead center and then I make my pull. And we hit perfect and this ball does drop. So That's the angle that we want to take it from. I missed it on my other account. So the one that's a minus 29, I actually, I missed this shot, which stinks. I wish I could have it back, but you know, you can't. Uh, if, you're worried, if you're wondering about what the elevation pull was, I pulled that one 20% at mid, okay? 20% at mid. And then this, this ball here is, um, I sent this one out of bounds, okay? But I'm going to show you the landing spot, and we don't need to see the shot. But I sent it out of bounds, and I actually picked up a par on this hole, on this account. Um, but you can do this with the wind 5 power 1 ball. You can do the shot with the kingmaker. But it is a good wind angle to try to get. So because I hit a ball out of bounds um, on this account, I took the safe route on my other account, and I did a bounce-up shot. But it was, um, <laughs> trust me, it's nothing to see. I didn't practice it. I just went right after it. But I've got the green inner ring here right on the rough line to the left. Ball guideline favoring left-hand side of the cup. This is with full top. And then it's going to be, you know, about 0.2 bars of side spin to the left. And then, you know, I make my pull. But like I said, you know, that's, that's where you want to land, just like we did on the last round. But a great left, as you're going to see here, is deadly. Great left, sends the ball out of bounds, you know, and that really sucks that that happened. But, you know, it is what it is. It's the final round, and sometimes you got to gamble to get back into the race or to try to win, and that's what I was trying to do there. 
All right, now we're going to go to hole number nine. Hole number nine um, and hole 18 are both very favorable wind for this hole, which is nice. I'm going to go with two bars, a side spin to the left. I'm going to go with the rock and cataclysm combo. You can go with the big dog, you know, whatever you're comfortable with. Nice part about this one is we're going to go two left, and you're going to see here we're even able to use just a sliver of top spin. And then we're going to make our wind adjustment here, and then you're going to see me use left curl because we want to end up on the left-hand side of the fairway. That way we've got a clear shot to get onto to the next fairway, friend or green, just depending on how your rollout is. Perfect ball. Comes in very nicely, as you see. These are for shot number two. Shot number two, I play 0% at max. Top spin, right side spin. You know, really at this point, we're just trying to make sure that we get the ball onto the fairway or the green, like I said. Don't forget, just a little bit of OP, not a whole lot. Don't forget your right curl. Here I actually hit the trees and I rolled out, which is a little strange. I might have got lucky because I might have used too much overpower, but I do fall down and very, very easy eagle there on hole number nine. That's going to take us to hole number 10. Hole number 10, I'll talk about this one for a second. This wind is terrible. Um... It kind of eliminates going over the sand and trying our short chip-in shots like we've been going for the most of the tournament. Uh, I did try to take a bubble ball in practice and get there. I even used my full top spin on an extra mile nine. And I hit a great ball to the left, and I barely rolled out. So that shot is not going to be that consistent. We're going to have to play over here. bad part about playing over here is I haven't played it all tournament long, and I really didn't have any replays from previous tournaments to give me a good idea of, you know, how shot number two was going to play. This shot's easy. You know, we're just going with our top spin and side spin to the right. Then obviously we want to make sure that we go from fairway to fairway. Now I hit a perfect ball here, but, you know, I guess I just didn't, um, pulled enough elevation there because I barely, barely clip the rough and roll out. So I would suggest that you use just a click of OP there to make sure you get over that rough area. Shot number two, I went ahead and just played at 15% at mid here. We're going to have to use some right side spin to get the ball towards the hole. And then we want to make sure that because we're having headwind that we use, that we make sure the ball guideline is going nicely through the pin like that. So I do hit a perfect ball, so we can kind of see how this one comes in. I do believe I miss it to the right, and I barely clipped that rough, too. So I'm not a fan of hole number one on the back nine. I didn't spend a ton of time, you know, trying to get it figured out or dialed in. But, um, you know, I've got a lot more drops here. Well, I've got, I've got drops coming here on the back nine, starting with this hole right here. 5% at max. We're going to be playing a rough bump. I do like the crosswind and then the wind blowing from right to left on this hole. That does help us. And here you're going to see we're just using a sliver of top spin with one bar of side spin to the left. 5% at max. You can kind of see the offset position there. Just like that. Perfect ball. Now, I mean, I, I only made this one out of two attempts. So this one's going to come in, as you can see here, right-hand side of the cup. And then my other account, you know, it barely missed to the right-hand side. So that shot's there. It's close. You know, just depending on wind strength, we might need to use a little bit more of that side spin to the left. But at least that gives you a really good reference point to go out there and make a couple shots in practice to make sure you have the offset right and that side spin to the left correct. All right, this is going to be hole number three. Now, I'll tell you one thing about hole number three is both my opponents picked up a birdie um, on this hole. So this one is maybe giving people a lot of trouble. So if you're able to eagle it, this might be one where you gain a shot on you know some of the field. Well, you will because, like I said, both my opponents birdied it. The bubble ball is becoming one of my favorite uh, balls in the game. <laughs> um, you know, you get that wind resistance three, power five. This ball is given away, you know, in golden shots. So 
Hopefully you still have some out there, or if you're a Moneyball player, you might have other things like this. You could, of course, still do this with just a regular Berserker, but you might have to use a little bit of OP on the drive. Now, you're going to see here we're not even close to max distance of our club. We're still pulling it at max, and then I am using some overpower, as you saw. But ultimately, you know, for us, this ball comes in very nicely. And that's going to leave us for shot number two. Shot number two, unfortunately, you know, we're not able to get to that back part of the funnel. It's just back-to-back -back headwind. We're just going to play this one 10% at max. And then all we're trying to do is make sure that we just end up, you know, somewhere on the back part of the green, fairway, fringe, anything short shot to get in. Make sure you got a good developed ball guideline there too going over that second rough because you don't want to clip that rough and fall short because this is a very wonky green to try to chip in from the front. We would rather end up back here than we would up front as that's cost me in tournaments past. It's always one of those things I think about on this hole. So I'd rather go to the back of the green than come up short. All right, hole number four here, we're going to play one to one. Three bars of side spin to the right. We don't need any other type of spin. I'm going to zoom in here. I'm going to show you the green square that I'm looking for. All right. So right here. Look at the very end of my ball guideline. Notice that it's in the light green square. And you can still see the top left-hand corner of that square. So that's where we're at. And then... Um, that's not exactly where we want to be though, but I was running out of time. I want to be just a little bit, it's going to be hard to explain. I want to be just a little bit shorter than that. Okay. A little bit shorter and left. So I would rather have the end of my ball guideline pointing into that corner pocket. So that's why you're going to see me move my target down here just a little bit, but I was running out of time. So I wanted to hurry up. And here you're probably going to have to pull your, or you're going to have to push your rings instead of pull. Or maybe I just did because I knew that I wasn't in the right landing square. I don't remember. It's very early today. I'm very, very tired if you can't tell. But, you know, I just come up to the right hand side. So I didn't move that down and over enough. But it's close. I have not picked that one up at all in pro in this tournament, which is very, very frustrating. But I do um, get stumped on this hole too. So we're going to go 10% at max. We're going to go four top, a little bit more than four top, maybe three right. I come up a little bit short on the drive. That's why I say maybe a little bit more than four top. But you know this fairway has got some inconsistent landing spots, as you can see. My ball guideline is going in and out, in and out, right? But here I make my pull. Hit a perfect ball. I would really like the better rollout, you know, than that. That's to me that's too short on this drive. But here shot number two, I play zero percent at mid. And you know this this one's been really good to me all tournament trying to find that funnel. When you do the left side spin, you know, a little bit of back spin, not a, not a lot. That's one bar. Here we got the headwinds. We went the ball guideline going through the hole. I mean, look, I feel like I'm all up in that funnel, right? I make my adjustment here. Let's see if I messed anything up. I mean, I didn't watch the replay, so. This is my first time really taking a look at the replay with you. Yeah, that shot's underpowered. That's my Achilles heel. Ah, David. Okay. So as you can see here, the shot's underpowered. So my ball guideline doesn't play true. That's why we come up short. Very, very frustrating. I wish I could stop that darn underpower all the time. All right, hole number six, 10% at max. Six top. Don't believe we need any side spin. I'm just going to find the sticky part of the fairway here. It's just above that sand. You can see there. As I move my target around, it just stays on one spot. It's typically with that yellow ring up there by the rough line. Here I make my adjustment for the wind. Perfect ball. That shot looks like it was underpowered too. 
Other power is normally something that kills some of my shots. And when I think about not underpowering is when I typically hit great. But I will say that I am um, not playing my best today, even though I had a good round. I'm just crazy tired. That's all right. All right, three bars of side spin to the right combined with, what's that, about half a bar top spin. Minus 5% at mid. I don't get this shot to drop. I wish I did. You can see I got the ball guideline going towards the hole. That shot's not underpowered. That was a normal shot. Perfect ball. Maybe I should have underpowered it, huh? This time I go long. <laughs> so, you know, hole number six has been a tough one to drop for sure. I uh, hope that you get it. Now we go to hole number seven. Hole number seven, we do drop this shot. Um, so there's two different ways you can play this one, but I only played it one way. So remember this wind angle. We can do this APOC shot. Now you can do this with an APOC four, five, six. You know, you got plenty of juice on the APOC to do this shot. Because you're going to see here that I have an APOC 6, but don't let that fool you because I'm not utilizing this top spin that comes with that club. I'm not utilizing the power that comes with the club because you're going to see that I back my target up quite a bit. The reason why we back our target up quite a bit on this hole is because we don't want to go to the top part of the fairway. The top part of the fairway stinks because it makes your shot number 2 to pin super weird. You don't want to come down on shot number 2 from the left hand side of the cup because you have to use a whole bunch of like left side spin and it's just a very very weird shot there is a specific place we want to land or you can also do the extra mile power shot that i did in the opening round i think i did that opening round um back nine possibly but i do have an extra mile power shot out there as well and that's the same wind angle but here i like this one three bars of side spin to the right you see that we're going with about five and a half bars of topspin. You see that I'm backing my target up all the way to the plus eight. So, you know, I'm not using the power of the APOC six. I'm not using the topspin. All we're doing is just utilizing the curl, okay? But here, we're going to go with full OP, full curl, and we are trying to hit perfect. I do hit perfect, and you're going to see this ball comes in um, where we want it to. But again... You don't want to go with too much topspin because you do not want to get high up on the fairway. I mean, if I could pick a spot on the fairway, this would have been it. So I was very happy that this happened. And now I play this one 30% at mid. Now you get to see that we're really approaching the hole essentially straight on, which is nice. I do use one bar of side spin to the left just because of the way that this green slopes. And then I put the ball guy lying into the hole just like that. I make my pull. These inbringer shots always make me nervous. But I hit a perfect ball. And you see here, we bounce into the cup. And we're on there for the eagle on hole number seven. That's going to take us into hole number eight. Hole number eight, I'm not messing around with that shot anymore. At this point, I had a chance to win the tournament. So... I did take quite a few practice shots with the bounce over this time, to be honest. And you're going to see here that I get robbed. All right, 1.2 to 1.3 left. And this is about, what, 3.2 back? Something like that. I, I do my spin first. I get my spin out of the way first. And now you're going to see me really try to find one specific landing spot on these green squares up here. And I start to zoom in so I can find it. That's not it. I know that's not it, so I got to redo it. And then you get the shot clock coming on. You see, you get nervous. Okay. I don't know if you can see this on the replay or not because it looks it's so dark here. But take a look at where the cup is. It's in a, it's in a vertical row of dark green squares. I've got the very end of my ball guideline after the spins are set. And the next group of vertical rows, all right? So a little bit of separation there between the next group and where my ball guideline is. You know, that's how I was looking for it. You just kind of take a look at that and figure out, you know, what's the best way for you to try to duplicate this landing spot.
Got that shot off of two seconds left. Thought I had this one. I really did. I was so confident in my landing position. <laughs> but as you can see here, I rolled the cup on hole number eight. So now we go to hole number nine. Again, very favorable wind. Here we're going to go 10% at max. Same thing with the Titan ball here. Two bars of side spin to the left. You can play this one, um, you know, with no top spin, no back spin. The nice part about this one is, again, same thing on the left curl on this hole. Nice part is we're getting nice wind here to get shot number two. Now, I would have liked to got a little bit higher up. Shot number two, um, I had to do something different here, which we won't have to do because you're going to use, you know, you're going to get a little bit higher up. You're not going to use that little bit of back spin like I did on the drive. You can even use like maybe a 0.2, 0.3 top. But here, you're going to see me stretch my club up like that. And I need I need three rings of overpower, right, to get where I want to go. So I make my adjustment for the wind. And then I push back up those three rings. So all I really should have done is take a normal shot. But the habit got the best of me, and I took a little bit of OP on this shot. You really shouldn't play this game on very little sleep. <laughs> but uh, I roll into the rough. And, but again, that's just a mistake because I should have known that when I push back up that I don't need to use any overpower. My ball guideline would have played true. But that's it. I scraped together a minus 29. Hopefully it finishes for a good spot. And I hope you go out there and crush it. Please subscribe. Please hit the thumbs up. And if you have the means to do so and you'd like to show appreciation for my work on this tournament, you can always make a donation to my channel via my PayPal link in the comments below. And I mean it when I say I'm truly, truly thankful for anybody who does that. Best of luck, everybody. Thank you.